Hi everyone, Matt here from Proof Fly Fishing. In our last video we talked about some things to consider when looking for a rod to restore. And in this video I'm going to talk about two schools of thought when it comes to um, how to go about restoring a rod. So um, the first school of thought is going to be to bring this rod to as close to the original condition as possible. Meaning as long as all the guides are there and they're in good shape that you will remo you'll carefully remove the guides, um, catalog them, and then put them back on in the exact same location. Now, if you're going to take that approach, the first thing you'll want to do is create a map of this rod. And um, I'll put up a picture here of the map that I use, and we also have that available um, to download on our website in the tutorial section if you want to use it, but you know a piece of paper or another piece of paper will work just fine. It's up to you. But it's important what you want to do is measure each rod section and then um, on each, you know, for each guide you want to put a very precise location as to where it goes and then catalog those. So you'll see on the chart that I posted here like guide number one would um, be removed, cataloged, and then you would put that guide into it like a Ziploc bag with a number one on it so you always know exactly which guide goes where on the broad that you're working on. Another good idea um, if you're taking this approach is to um, take out your phone or a camera and take some pictures of the guide wraps. That way you can get a sense of how long they are, um, the coloration, if they have trim bands or not, and don't forget to get the area just in front of the grip. Sometimes there um, are some really nice signature wraps down there um, that can be very difficult to recreate if you don't have a photo that you're working off. Um, same goes for the grip. If you want to restore the grip to the original shape and dimensions, um, you want to take a measurement of the length and then take different caliper measurements um, of the size to make sure that when you recreate that, you're getting the exact same thing. Um, reasons to keep the guides, uh, maybe the rod has a lot of sentimental value and you're less interested in how it's going to perform than you are um, getting it to look exactly the same or maybe you know you just want to use the exact same guides that are on it um, for different reasons. Um, so yeah, totally up to you, but if you're going to take that route, make sure you do as detailed of a map as possible. Um, included in that, and regardless of how, you know, what you're, which school you're going to go with as far as the restoration, one of the first things you want to do is to mark the spline of this rod. So the way I'm doing it is I use a piece of green, some of our guide tape, and I put it on the ferrule because I'm not going to mess with the ferrules right now. And I line it up with the side with the flat that the guides are on. And I'll do a close-up of this to show you how that looks. And then I wrap tape around that piece of tape to make sure that nothing gets moved around uh, when I'm you know, working on the rest of the blank. But that's very important. Um, these rods will not cast right if the guides are wrapped on the wrong side. So make sure you get that detail in place regardless of how you go about um, restoring the rod after that. Now, the second school of thought when it comes to restoring the rod is to um, update the size of the guides and the guide spacing. You know, by modern standards, the, the spacing on this rod is, you know, the guides are very far apart and they are also very small. Um, now, if we decide to upgrade those two things, it's not because the original builder didn't know what they were doing. It's got nothing to do with that. So. Um, Instead, what it is, is we are fishing much different, um, much different lines than they were 50 years ago, let alone, you know, 70, 80 years ago when your rod might have been made. So all we're doing is taking the essential components of the rod, the blank, and we're updating the, uh, the guide set to perform better with a modern line and modern styles of fishing. Um, and we'll talk about different guide sizes a little bit later as we start to wrap guides back on this. Um, but if you want to get a sense of how many guides you might need for this blank, um, I'm going to post a chart in the bottom here. This is from Chris Carlin's website and we have a link to it in our tutorial section if you want to find it. Um, if you want to run guide spacing, there's two things you need to consider. One is the overall length of the rod. So if you look on the chart, you can you know select uh, feet and inches. You can switch it to metric on the bottom. 
uh, if you're more comfortable using those the, uh, the form of measurement. And uh, once you have the length entered, what you want to do is take the number of guides and adjust that. So the general rule that we use is you round up to the nearest foot. So in this case, the rod, I think it's around seven foot three, uh, right around there. And so, or actually, sorry, seven foot six. And if we round up, we're gonna round up to eight, and then we add one. So a seven and a half foot rod is gonna get uh, nine guides, not including the tip top. So that would be modern spacing. Um, currently, this rod has uh, six guides on it, including the stripping guide. So we're gonna add three. We're gonna close those up just a little bit um, and go from there. So um, in the next video, what we're gonna do is actually start stripping this rod down. We'll start with removing the guides very carefully and we'll get the grip off and the real seat and then I'll show you how to clean old varnish off the actual blank. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.